a body Yinara Monkoto Iradi Missy a body Yinara Monkoto Yaneradi A body Yinara Mungu to iradi wadi enkuni anionya mseno ohini Yesu oni e radi. Wadi koni anionya mseno ahini Yesu oni yene radi mesi abodi yinara. Mungoto eradi abodi nyinara mungoto eradi mesi abodi nyinara mumayenku tu yene radio abodi nyinara Yankoto iradi wadi enkoni mo anionya mseno ohini Yesu anoni ene radi wadi. Ankuni Anyonyam Seno Ohini Yesu Onini Ene Radi Messi Abodi Yinara Mungoto E Radi a body in Yinara Mongoto Iradi Missy A body in Yinara Mongoto Iradi A body in Yinara Mongoto Iradi Wadi Ankoni Anyonyam Yisano Ohini Yesu Onwani Yene Radi Wadi Ankoni and you nyam sano ohini yesu wani yene radi wedi ankuni and you nyam sano ohini ohini Oni yene radi mesi abodi yinara mungu to yene radi abodi yinara mungu to iradi mesi abodi yinara. Mungu tu iradia Abodi nyinara 
Mogodo iradi mesi wedi enkoni elionya mselo oini Yesu onwani ene radi wedi enkoni. Mandelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelel
day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they declare knowledge. There is no speech. There is no speech or language where their voice is not heard. Their voice goes out into all the earth. The words to all, the words to the ends of the world. In the heaven, he has pitched his tent for the sun, which is like a bridegroom coming forth from his pavilion, like a champion rejoicing to the run, rejoicing to run his course. Ladies and gentlemen, there are speeches for every day. Every day, Catherine, welcome. Every day there is a speech. And for that matter, if you don't catch the day with a speech, if you don't hold on to the day with a speech, the day will grant a speech for you. You didn't hear what I said. The day will grant its own speech for you. So every day you want to be sure that you are telling something to the day. So thank you so much, Yao Fran. Thank you very much, President, for coming to join me. Psalm 38, reading from verse number 12. It says, have you ever given order to the morning? Ah, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Morning starts from 12. Morning. It says, have you ever given order to the morning? Ladies and gentlemen, there is order. It, there is order. I mean, when you are saying you are giving order, you are commanding the thing to leave diamond. Thank you so much. You are giving order to living things. You are giving order to time. You are giving order to creation. You are giving order to the wind. You are giving order to the sun. You are giving, because the Bible says in the book of Genesis, it says, and the Lord God created the man and gave man dominion over the things that he has created. So man has dominion over the things he has created. So in the book of Job chapter 38, and reading from verse number 12, I want the scriptures to become common to you every morning, every week, when you wake up, he says, How he says, Have you ever ordered? Have you ever given orders to the morning? Have you given orders? No one order. It means that you want to give an order to every second, every minute, every hour, and every day, every week. As you walk through the week, hallelujah. So you want to tell the week something, you want to tell Monday something, you want to tell Tuesday something you want to tell wednesday something you want to tell thursday something you want share the page and invite your friends let's get into prayer and 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 they they, they came in at this last hour so you have a last hour prayer time it's just an hour exactly an hour you cross over and you are there you are already in the new day and 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 our brothers and sisters who find themselves in, in, in the United States of America, will enter into the new day, I think, and will enter with them in the name of Jesus. He says, have you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place? Show the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it. Oh, somebody hear me. You want to give orders. Oh, my Lord. Give orders. Give orders. Give orders. You want to give orders to the day. And so you give orders to the day. The Bible says that in, in, in verse 13, it says, And shake the wicked out of it. The wicked has entered into the day. They are here to destroy. They are here to bring shame. They are here to adjust the things that God is about to do for you. So you want to give orders to the day and shake out every wickedness, shake out every wicked plan, shake out every wicked orchestration, shake out every wicked machination, shake out every wicked plan. Somebody lift up your voice and declare in the name of Jesus, every wicked plan that has entered this day, I order you to be shaken off. I order you to fall out. You will not survive the cross day into my new day. This wonderful day I enter, I declare that every wicked plan 
hands of the devil, every wicked action, every wicked act that has entered into this day, that is about to go into this day, that is planning to walk into my day, to change my destiny in this day. I order every wickedness to shake off according to Job chapter 39, reading from verse number 12 to 13. Every wickedness, every wickedness, every wickedness I shake you off. Every wickedness I shake you off. Every man that has planted itself in the form of wickedness, I shake you off. I shake you off by the word of the Lord. I shake you off by the word of the Lord. I declare that you will not stand in this day. You will not enter into my day with me. Every plans of the evil one, every plans of the devil, every plans of the devil, every plans of the wicked one concerning my business, concerning my life, I command that you will not have a stay. You will not have a stay in my life. Every plan concerning my wick wickedness that is coming from my father's side, that is coming from my mother's side, I declare in the name of Jesus, I shake you off. I shake you off. I shake you off. I shake you off. In the name of Jesus, I shake you off. Everywhere you have been planted, whoever planted you is not my problem. But once you have been planted, I shake you off. I shake you off my finances. I shake you off my health. I shake you off my womb. I shake you off every situation in my life that holds on to it. I shake you off. I shake you off. I shake you off. I declare that you will not survive. You will not survive. You will not survive. Every wickedness over the life that I live. Bible says, let the wicked be shaken out of the earth. He says the earth takes its shape like a clay under the seal. Its future stands out. Those of a garment. Look, there is a shape that needs to be taken by you. He says the wicked are denying the light and they and and they are upraised. Um, is broken. There is something about the wicked one. The wicked one makes louder noise than us. So there are times that they put fear in us. There are times that they intimidate us. There are times that they use words to come and make us feel intimidated. But today you want to declare every form of intimidation that is released, that has been brought to that level to bring me shame and disgrace, disgrace. I declare that you will not stand. I declare that you will not stand. I declare that you will not stand. Over my children, you will not stand. Over my wife, you will not stand. Over my husband, you will not stand. Over my work, you will not stand. I declare in the name of Jesus, shake off the wickedness. I shake off every form of wickedness over my life. I shake off any form of wickedness over my life. I shake off any form of wickedness over my life. Any form of wickedness, I shake Go off my life. Go off my life. I declare that you will not have any place in my life. Everywhere you have taken shape already, I reduce you to clear. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. No wicked shall survive in my dwelling. No wicked shall survive in my dwelling. No wicked shall survive in my dwelling. Every wickedness that has been released, you will not survive in my dwelling. You will not have a place in my dwelling. You will not have a place in my dwelling. You will not have a place in my dwelling. You will not have a place in my dwelling. I shake up wickedness. I shake up wickedness. I shake you off in the name of Jesus. I shake you off. I shake you off. I shake you off. You will not have a place in my dwelling. You will not have a place in my dwelling. In the name of Jesus. Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter number one. If you have your Bible here, then we want to approach something. It says in the, in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, a reading from verse number 10. It says, see today, see today, I appoint you, Diamond. I appoint you, Captain. I appoint you, Yah. I appoint you, Tena. I appoint you, I appoint you, see today. I appoint you, Josephine. I appoint you, see today. I appoint you. The Lord is appointing you to take charge over this day. The Lord is appointing you to make sure that things go the way you deserve it to go according to his word, according to his power. The Lord is giving you the opportunity. The Lord is giving you the opportunity. He says, see today. See today. See today. I see today. I see today in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 and reading from verse number 10. It says, see today, 
I have seen today. I am in today. I am. I have the opportunity to walk into today. This is my today. I walk into my today. It is my today. I walk into 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 my today. He says, see today. See today. See today. Now, if you don't know why you're seeing today, read from verse 9. He says, then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, now I have put my words in your mouth. What controls the world is words. Words are what I use to control the world. The world is not controlled by anything except the word. The world is controlled by nothing except words. I don't know what words you have today. I don't know what is on your heart you want to speak to your day. I don't know what you have in your heart you want to speak by words. Because the Bible says that the word of God was what was used to create the world. So he has lifted the word about himself. You know, the word of the Lord has been lifted above God. He says the word has been lifted above himself. He has he has lifted the word above himself that everything you ask according to his name, it will come to pass. This is a Bible verse. The word. The word. Words are what you are using this time. We are not using anything except words. So if you know about words, if you can hear his word because he has lifted his word above himself so bible says in the book of john chapter chapter 15 verse 17 he said if you remain in me and my words remain in you ask everything in my name and i the lord i will do it ladies and gentlemen there is something about words and words are what we speak so when people confuse your words when people take away your words when people turn your words when people make your words meaningless when people make your words not to stand because you see words you say let the counsel of ahitophel become foolish words in the book of 2 Samuel chapter 15, verse 31, the Bible says that now David prayed to God and said, let the counsel, let the words, let the machination, let the arrangement of letters of Ahithophel become foolishness, become useless, become meaningless, become unfruitful. It means that words, words, words. So the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah chapter 1, and reading from verse number 1, he says, the Lord reached unto me, I reach to you now by the power of the Lord, and I touch your lips. I reach to you now, and I touch your lips. I reach to you now. I touch your lips. I touch your lips in the realms of the spirit. I release power over your lips. I release power over your lips. I declare that words shall come into your mouth. You will not lose words to pray. You will not lose words to construct. The word of the Lord has come to you. I touch your lips. You will not go empty without sharing the word of the Lord. It says, I reach, he reached forth and touch and touch my mouth. He touched the mouth. And when he touched the mouth, he didn't touch for any reason, but he touched the mouth to see words in his mouth. He touched his mouth. The Lord will touch your mouth with words. The world was created with words. The world was created with words. Shira, thank you. The world was created with words. So words, words, words. Words, words. He says, when he touched my mouth, he put words in my mouth. That is what I'm doing to you this morning. And when he put the words in my mouth, he says, now see today. When you have a word, you can see today. You have a word, so you have entered into today. You have a word, so you are taking charge of today. You have a word, so you are commanding today. You are uttering today. You are declaring that today will not be like yesterday. You are declaring that by today will be different from my yesterday. Every evil orchestration of yesterday will not enter my today. I take charge of my today. I make my today a better place than my yesterday. Yes Yesterday is God, but today has come to change my situation. Yesterday is God. Yesterday I was sick, but today I am healed. Yesterday I was weak, 
but today I am strong. Yesterday I was poor, but today I am rich. Yesterday I had a bad news, but today I take a good news. Somebody talk about today and the worst in today, and as you speak about today, you will see blessings in your today. I command my today to hear the words of today. Today, he gave them power today. And this is what he said. He says, I appoint you over nations, over kingdoms, to approach, tear down, and destroy, overthrow, to build and plant. We are overthrowing. We are tearing down. Share the bed with your friends. Everybody needs to say something to the Lord. Don't just, just share the bed for others to join you to pray. It is very important that you don't pray alone. One time I went to Santana and got up at dawn, and the first question he asked was that, who is praying for you? I mean, it's very important for somebody to pray for you. And for those of you who are part of my prayer line, who are part of my Facebook, I mean, there is something you don't know. I pray for you. I declare open your life every time. I mean, if your name becomes common in my mouth, then your prayer has become common in the throne room of grace of the Almighty God. Why? Because, Regina, thank you so much, Nino. I mean, your name becomes common, then it's about who is praying for you, who is chanting against you, who is doing something that would not help you become what you are supposed to be. You see, there are a lot of things that people can plant against you. There are many times that if you don't declare things to happen in your life, you want to tell your day something because the Lord says that, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, and reading from verse number 9 and 10, the Bible says that the Lord has put words in my mouth. And he says, as you see today, to approach, he has put me in charge of nations and put me in charge of kingdoms. And he says, approach and tear down, destroy and overthrow to build and to plant. You overthrow. I overthrow everything that has been thrown. Everything that has been enthroned, I overthrow. Everything that has been planted, I uproot. Everything that was planted before I was born, I uprooted. Hey, look, somebody listen. Say, in the name of Jesus, everything that was planted with words concerning my life, concerning my name, I uproot. Everything that was buried, that was buried with my name by words, that was buried concerning my health, that was buried concerning my finances, I approved. I approved. I approved. I approved. Everything that has been kept and is standing, I overturn. I overturn. I overturn. Anything concerning my wife, concerning my children, concerning my business, in the name of Jesus, I overturn to it positivity. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Overturn every negativity. Overturn and approve. Overturn and approve. Overturn and approve. Overturn. 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 I overturn. I overturn. I overturn in the name of Jesus. I overturn. I overturn every negative thought that has been put there because of me. I break it and I overturn it. I break and overturn. I break and overturn. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I declare that I will stand tall according to the power that the Lord has released me. I overturn, I overturn, I overturn, I overturn, I overturn, I overturn, I overturn. In the mighty name of Jesus, for the weapons of our warfare, they are mighty for the pulling down of struggle. Every conspiracy that has been done concerning my life from childbirth, knowingly or unknowingly, I declare in the name of Jesus that, O oh Lord, I turn every evil counsel against my promotion into foolishness. Every evil counsel concerning my establishment into foolishness. Every evil counsel the Lord has been made concerning obtaining my documents eh, into foolishness. Every evil counsel that has been made concerning my positive change in my life, I turn it into foolishness. Oh Lord, I turn every evil counsel concerning my career into foolishness. In the name of Jesus, I declare and declare and declare that every negative counsel 
every evil counsel against my vision, I turn it into foolishness. I declare that in the name of Jesus, every evil counsel concerning my destiny, concerning my wife's destiny, concerning my children's destiny, concerning my friend's destiny, those who are living with me, those who are in my house, those who are around me, my siblings, I turn their counsel into foolishness. The Lord has given you power to turn it. So I turn them into foolishness. Every evil counsel against my healing, against my breakthrough, I turn them into foolishness. I overturn, I overturn, I destroy, I destroy, I overturn, I pull down, I pull down, I approve. In the name of Jesus, every counsel against my promotion, I turn them into foolishness. Every counsel against my promotion, I turn them into foolishness. Every counsel against my education, I turn them into foolishness. Every counsel against my project, I turn them into foolishness. 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 In the name of Jesus, every counsel against my progress, progress in my finance, progress in my health, progress in my marriage, progress in my relationship, I turn them into foolishness. Progress in my childbirth, I turn them into foolishness. A progress against my dreams, my visions, and my destiny, I turn them into foolishness. I command that they will turn them into foolishness. They will become foolish. I declare in the name of Jesus that I charge this office. I charge this office. I charge it office in the name of Jesus. I charge my office. I charge my office with a consuming fire of the Lord to consume every conspiracy, every conspiracy concerning my life. I command the Lord, they overturn, they overturn, they overturn, they overturn in the name of Jesus. The Lord is good, and you don't know. I mean, there are a lot of things that the Lord is speaking to me, and we are going to pray about them. There are people who have orchestrated to frustrate you in your life. Their plan is to bring you frustration. There are many a times that you couldn't get myself. There are many a times that they can't come close to you, you see. So they will use people. They will use the words of people. They will use, they can use your own children. They can use people who are close to you. The Bible says that a man's enemy is from his own household. A man's enemy is from his own household. They, they are not coming from anywhere, my friend. A man's enemy is from his household. In the book of Matthew chapter 10. If you read very carefully the book of 10, 30 says, it is not coming from anywhere. So when somebody tells you that, no, your, your mother can't be a witch, your father cannot be a witch, your siblings cannot be a witch against you. I mean, the way this girl is helping you in your office, she cannot be an enemy to you. Oh, don't forget that the life of Jesus was fully connected to be destroyed by his own clothes associated with a kiss. So when I say your enemy, when I say somebody who wants your destruction, it is not because of anything, but Bible says that a man's enemy is from his own household. So Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter number 10, and reading from verse number 10, it says, it says a man's enemy will be the members of his own household. A man's enemy will be the members of his own household. So when they want to conspire against you, when they want to make a plan against you, you have been given the power of wars to overturn. You have been given the power of wars to uproot. You have been, thank you so much, sir. You have been given the power of wars to make sure that what you say will come to pass. What you command is what will come to pass. Bible says that, and the Lord God brought the things he has created to man, for man to name the things he has created. And for every name man called the things, God accepted it. When dominion and power is bestowed to you, is invested into you, one of the things that comes to you is that you have the power to control. You have the power to establish. You have the power to overturn. You have the power to approve. You have the power to plant new things. So your enemy who has been in your household, in your tent, in your office, 
within the rank and file of the people you deal with, they are the enemies that are with you. You want to declare that every enemy that is in my household, and the household is not just your family. We have made families just because we have traveled. We have created household because we have helped in our homes. We have people who have come to join us on Facebook because we have created a household. So anybody who is in my household, whether he's a husband, whether he's a wife, look, there are people that if not because of them, today some evil things you are doing, you will do it. There is a particular man who came into your life. There is a particular woman who came into your life. There is a particular child that came into your life. And from that day forward, your life has been evil day and night. You want to declare every conspirator, every conspirator that has been released to conspire and destroy, to conspire and destroy, to conspire and disgrace. Because the Bible says that, and in the life of David, one of the conspirators who never gave David the peace of mind, one of the conspirators who never made David feel that he was also important, one of the conspirators that we all know that we can talk about in the life of David was no other person than that conspirator was who? The conspirator was Absalom. And once you get conspirators like Absalom, you know that the people are close to you. So when, when, when a crocodile comes and tells you, or when the fish leaves the water and tells you the crocodile is dead, you have nobody to challenge that crocodile because the crocodile is coming from the river. You can't go under the river. So when a fish is speaking and telling you that, I know what I am talking about, that I know who I am saying it is this, I am telling you that this man is this. You know, I mean, you, you should be careful when, when people who are close to you have left you and they are telling people things about you. It is easy for people to believe what people who are in your camp are saying than to believe what you are saying. You understand what I'm talking about? So David made it clear to all of us in the book of Second Samuel 15, 12, and you read that to say, while Absalom was offering sacrifice, he also sent for Ahitophel and 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 and, and Gal, Gal, Gil, 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 Gilonite. He, he sent for Ahitophel the Gilonite, David's counselor, to come from, from Gilead, his hometown. And so they conspired, they conspired. You see, one of the things about life is that when people are close to you. If you check the whole book of 2 Samuel carefully, read from verse 1, you can see that David needed people to support him. Look, ladies and gentlemen, you can't do it alone. You can't live a life alone. You cannot be single forever. You need somebody around you. There are people who have come near your dwelling, and they are there to become support for you. I mean, look, look, look at the life of even Adam that God created. He needed somebody around. So it is not that people are lazy. That is why they get house up. It's not that people are raised lazy, that is why they get drivers. But you, in the life you live, you always need people around you. So Bible says that, and David needed somebody to give him counsel. And that person was nobody. Somebody that would advise David. Clearly, God gave him a right to become somebody. And that person was nobody, but was who? A little friend. Because you see, the Bible says that a man's ways are innocent unto him. But his motives are weighed by the law. They are conspirators. They conspire. When they say people are conspiring, what, what, what does it mean to conspire? Conspire. Conspire. It says to make secret plans jointly to commit unlawful or harmful acts. To make secret plan jointly. So nobody can conspire alone. When people are conspiring, they need movement to conspire. And when people conspire against you, Second Samuel chapter 1, I'm reading verse 15. When people conspire against you, they conspire because they want to do some harm. They want to do something unlawful. 
So they are conspirators who you say there is I mean, then I mean, what, what do I have? The Bible says that the devil came to kill, to steal, and to destroy. He has come to kill you, to steal, and to destroy. And, and the sleeping is allowed. The scripture that we were last week, I told you I'll complete today. That particular scripture is 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 something else. You see, it is a powerful scripture. Somebody say powerful scripture that somebody will have money and all she wants to do is to look good and look better so she can enjoy the life that everybody else is enjoying. But look at what happened to her. She was smelling, she was thinking, she never had a chance to go among human beings because she has a particular segment in her life called the flow of blood. She was cut dead. She, she was not living properly. There was something wrong with her because her name was changed. When people conspire against you, they can conspire and release a sickness on you. They will conspire. You've forgotten that when it came to the life of, of, of the people in the land of Egypt, the Bible says that, and then Herod called the people, Pharaoh called the midwives and told them, when the Hebrew women come to deliver and they deliver, listen, uh, chapter 15, verse number 12, uh, the second Samuel, Sheila, check second Samuel 15. It says that when people, when, that's what happened to them. They said that they were midwives. They were, they were in their normal jobs. And the king called them and told them, when boys are born, what you need to do is to kill them. So conspirators will use everything possible. You'll be shocked a policeman will arrest you and you it's not because he wants to arrest you it has been conspired in the realms of the street to arrest you just to delay your time you have an appointment and you are rushing and the police will arrest you so that your appointment will become loyal and boy you have a position to do something and then they conspire the conspirators can use everything around you. They can use your mechanic around you. They can use your own your own workers around you. Conspirators don't need people who are not ready. They need people who are available to release information to them so they can harm you. The word conspire is to, to come together to have evil machination, evil plan against your life. So this morning, every conspirator who is within my household, every conspirator who is within my household, who has been sent to kill, who has been sent to destroy, who has been sent to finish my resources. Because the woman with the issue of blood constantly has something that she thought must be done, and she did it. There are many a times that whatever we need to do, it's not that we don't know. We know, so we do. We do it. We don't become people who, you know, there are people who are who are careless, who are like a Jessica. I mean, they don't take initiative. But you are not one of them. I'm telling you, 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 you are very, very forceful. You are very, very forceful. You yourself, you know that the life you live is a forceful life. The Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 5, it says, verse 25, it says, Mark 5, 25, it says, and a woman was there who had been subjected to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and has spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. She did something about her life. But when they conspire with people against you, they can conspire with your own physician. They can conspire with your own doctor. I mean, don't think it's in the Bible times, Pharaoh called the midwives who were working in the hospital to conspire with them to kill people's children. So I don't take it for granted that a nurse can be conspired with just to harm you, to remove your wound, not because there's a problem, 
to put needles in your womb, not because they can do a wrong surgery on you and make you bad reading for the rest of your life. It, is, it can be done through conspirators. They are con conspiring. And everybody who conspired is conspiring to destroy you. They are conspiring to bring you harm. They are conspiring to disgrace you. They are conspiring to make you a laughing stock. They are jealous of where you are standing. They don't want anybody to know who you are. They don't want your surviving story. They have made news out of your life. They have made everybody read it. Somebody, you don't take anything I told you. Don't take anything for granted. I didn't understand when we were growing. My mother would bind and bind mosquitoes, bind cockroaches, those times. And we thought it was a loss. But as I grew up, I realized that the conspirators can use anything at all to conspire to disgrace you, to conspire to bring you home, to conspire to make a ridicule out of your life. You get what I'm talking about. So there are many a times that your situation will rather keep you away from your solution. Your situation keeps you away from your situation. But any time a situation of yours is keeping you away from your situation, it means that your solution is what you have seen. Your situation should not keep you away from your solution but immediately your situation drives you away from your solution it means that your solution is in that particular situation that is calling you into that particular place so that is what happened in the life of the woman the woman had a situation in her life and it was a condition that doctors were treating and solution was not coming. But there was a solution that is waiting to, hand the, to handle the situation she was in. But going closer to the solution was the problem. The conspirators would not make your solution very pleasant into your eyes. They would bring out your problem they will make that particular situation bigger than the solution. But I'm here to tell you today that your solution is in it. So go forward to it. Every conspirator who has left your camp and has entered into another camp and is giving them formation about what you do, it weakens your thinking, it weakens your planning. It makes you weak. I understand. It makes you very weak. I'm, I know it makes you very weak. I know it makes you it makes you so weak. I don't know. It makes you weak that somebody is saying something against you, and it's true, but they have turned what they are saying. It will teach you. It doesn't even give you the right to pray. But I came to tell you that prayer is in your, your solution is in your prayer time. A minute prayer to God brings a lot of solution. So every conspirator who has conspired with my enemies against me, Lord, shame them. Lord, let their planning in the name of Jesus. Please, whatever they are planning, let it get them back. And I'm closing in the next few minutes. I told you I'm doing just an hour. And you're right to share the page with yours for others to come and pray with us. Because sleeping is allowed. When others are sleeping, let them sleep. But remember that you need to sleep with an extra oil. You need to sleep prepared. You need to sleep so that your situation that you are going through will be able to walk you into your solution. Let your situation walk you into your solution. Let your situation define what the reason. The Bible says that, and the woman smells, thinks, but kept on going to seek for solution from doctors. But the more she sees doctors, the worse the problem becomes. 
There are many a time that the more you look for solution, the more your problem becomes. But I came with the word this morning. There is another solution that when you get closer to, your problem will be solved. So the woman with the issue of blood, the Bible says she's cycled through the people. If you, if you read the account very well, in the book of Luke chapter 8, I read the Luke chapter 8 account, verse number 43 to 48. I mean, if you read that particular one very carefully, the, the account is very, very explanatory. Look at it from verse 43. It says, and a woman was there who had been subjected to bleeding for 12 years, but no one could heal her. She came up behind him and touched the edge of, she came up behind him and touched the garment and touched the clothes. And immediately her bleeding stopped. Jesus said, who touched me? Jesus answered. She said, who touched me? Jesus asked. When they all denied it, Peter said, Master, the people are crowding and, and pressing against you. But Jesus said, someone touched me. I know that power has gone out of me. There is a form of touching that pulls power out of Jesus. But I mean, the disciples were telling Jesus that everybody is touching you. Everybody has come around. There are so many crowds who are pushing us. And the Bible says that the woman with the issue of blood was told never to go into any crowd because she smells. The book of Luke chapter number, 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 number eight. And I'm reading from verse number four. And it's the same account of the bleeding of the woman. But Luke's expansion is what I love. It says the woman went into a crowd. Even though she was smelling and she was thinking, her situation was worsening because the doctor has declared her situation hopeless. Every hopeless situation that has been declared by a doctor. Today, look for solution in the crowd. Where you see that your solution is, don't let the crowd pull you back. Don't let the crowd pull you back. Don't let the crowd pull you back. Whatever they have said concerning your life will edge towards the solution. The solution is Jesus. The solution is standing there. It is not even at the upper level of the man. It is at the lower level. So when people are standing to block you, go under them. Go under them. Crawl under them. If somebody would touch the end of the garment of Jesus, then the person was not standing in the crowd. She was crawling in the crowd. She was walking with the air bowl under the ground, that the crowd was high, and she has believed that my solution has come. Son of David is coming, my solution. Somebody, you are not asleep because your solution is here. You want to touch the end of your garment. I want to touch your garment and bring my healing to pass. Bible says, and when she went into the crowd, she went behind, she went behind Jesus, and she went crawling behind Jesus. She went crawling behind Jesus. She was speaking and she was bleeding. Her strength was not like my strength. When people are bleeding, they are weak. When people bleed, they become very weak. Their energy level is reduced. The Bible says this woman went behind Jesus. And as she was going behind Jesus, Bible didn't tell us anything. They said she went behind Jesus. And check up, oh Jesus. Your situation has made you down. But use that particular condition. Crawl among the crowd. Business is bad. Everybody is doing the same thing you are doing. The crowd is pressing you. Because the account of this says that when Jesus felt the touch, he told the disciples, somebody has touched me. The disciples said, Master, the people are crowding and pressing against you. But Jesus said, someone touch me. I know that power has gone out of me. There is a touch of Jesus that is not the same touch. There is a prayer request that is not the same prayer request. I came to tell you to open your mouth and say, Jesus, this morning, as I enter 
into this week. I touch you in a different way. I encounter you in a different way. I bring my health condition to you in a different way. May I be healed this time in a different way. That the waters have been stirred in a different way. I see healing coming. I see breakthrough coming. Put your request before him. The woman was there looking for solution for her problem. And she has gone many ways. She has gone to doctors who have taken what she has. She has gone to many physicians. She has done what she's supposed to do. That everybody who advised you to do what you have done it. But here is a solution that has come. And this time you don't need anybody, but you need yourself. You need to walk through the crowd. You need to get and get rid of disgrace and shame. You need to get rid of ridicule and what people are saying. But the words they are speaking should not be the reason why you don't want to change your situation. Anytime your situation is changed, your opportunities become greater. The conspirators don't want your situation to change. They don't want you to move forward from where you are. They want you to mark time and be like them. The which were also buried by the way they were they are buried. The which you always remain single by the way they are single. The which that nothing will have been positive in your life but this time you don't know that that sister that brother who has refused to get a breakthrough your sharing of the break alone is a breakthrough for the person somebody said counselor you shared something to me and i forwarded to somebody what you shared and i forwarded is what brought the solution there are many a times that the medium we have we have to use it share the prayer to somebody let the person grow let somebody walk to the solution don't come and become a stagnant person in anybody's life but rather walk into the life of the situation and bring solution it is the solution that is why you are praying pray to god that every situation in my life i walk them into the solution and i declare that my solution is here my solution is here i take my breakthrough i take my answers in the name of jesus christ bible says when he touched jesus even in the cloud jesus felt it Remember that the woman was told not to go into crowd because everybody she would touch would be contaminated. So when Jesus, who was holy, also felt that she had been touched, there is a particular fear that would grip the woman. The woman will lose concentration because they told me not to touch anybody. They told me that I shouldn't go anywhere. Listen to me. The man who has a solution is the one whose voice you are going to hear. Because the woman was touching a lot of people. None of them were saying you have brought something out of me. Because the people that the woman was touching as she was going through the crowd had no gotten solution for her bleeding. They didn't have answers for her problem. So as she was going through the crowd, none of them said, you have touched me. Because everybody is touching everybody. Everybody is going through the same tunnel. Let me tell you, if your solution is not with a particular person, if your solution is not with them, they become time wasters. They become blockers of your answers. But when you meet the right person, he will feel that you have come to take your solution from me. The woman went into the cloud with her bleeding, thinking, smelling body. The body that nobody wants to see. She had a guy named called the bleeding woman. She had a guy named called the woman with the issue of blood. The 